everybody, I'm Alex. Um, in the day, I work for the cycling industry, and by night, I do burlesque. Uh, I do computer game burlesque. I am doing a show here on the 23rd of March. Find a flower or talk to me afterwards if you're interested. Um, so, I'm trying to see how I can do all of these things. So, I would like to talk to you about games that simulate dating. So, let's all go on a date together now. <laughs> And I'm going to start by asking, what is a date? Is, actually, is anybody here on a date right now? No? Damn! Because I was going to ask them. Um, so uh, I looked up on the dictionary, and it said uh, a date is, as you can see, a social meeting plan between two people who have or might have a romantic relationship. But shout out to Terrace House. <laughs> Uh, um, not all dates are prearranged. Um, as actually some people have been saying before, you could be on a date and there's someone else on the date. Um, uh, it could be a group date, like now, like this group date with me. <laughs> uh, you know, um, have you been on a date and maybe the other person didn't know that you wanted to date them? Um, you know, you've tried to date someone and they didn't know. Um, and the interesting thing, um, nailing down what a date is, is actually really hard. And games are all about systems and they're fixed and that's where you can get a conflict. Um, so with dating, there can be an element of doubt or an uncertainty. And for me, I think sometimes that's what makes it really fun. So as before, as Gigi was saying, like it's kind of fun and dating is kind of really weird. So let's go with it. So. Let's play a game. Uh, I am going to ask you, can you date it? And then you are going to say yes or no. <laughs> so the first up is a toaster. Yes, yes, you can taste, uh, date a toaster. How about a printer? Yes, yes, you can date a printer. Uh, and branded, not HP, uh, exclusively brother printers. <laughs> Uh, Nicolas Cage's one. Uh, I've skipped ahead of myself. The next would be a T-Rex. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby, and it fucking went well. <laughs> so next, I was gonna have pigeons, but like, yeah. yeah, we all know that one. You're not cool because you know about the pigeon one. So now I am gonna try and just do my sound off. If you are all ready for this. Um. I'm trying to think how best to do this. No, nah, it's cool. So, people that turn into cats. Uh, John Cena, the cast of Pacific Rim. Uh, Hamilton, the dating sim. Temmie, a werewolf. Uh, cat maids, an alpaca. Personified Sanrio characters. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics. There's three of these. Uh, Jake Tucker, I'm working on this. Uh, a cricket monster, and actually the translation for this is let's be in love with creatures, which was the working title for this talk. Um, uh, so this one is a human head in a plant pot. I'm gonna take an, a moment to talk about this one. Uh, it is called Tomac Save the Earth. Uh, it's a Korean game, the premise is the goddess of love, Evian, comes down to Earth to prove to the other gods that humans can love. We don't just have an interest in simple things as physical affections. And so in the game, you can kind of date this head. It's like a plant that you look after. Or you can just date other women and she destroys the Earth. <laughs> More dinosaurs. Uh, skeletons. Uh, Markiplier, but Markiplier made this game of a game you can date him and it's a YouTube dating game. Please go and play it. Uh, Namco characters, uh, Demons. This is actually an amazing Twine game, Demon Date. Please go and play it. Uh, Overwatch characters. This is in beta, but I don't know why, because Overwatch already is a dating sim. <laughs> Reverse Tamagotchi. I don't have time to explain this, so just look it up. Uh, dolphins, but you are a vapor wave killer whale. 
finally mayonnaise! Yes! It's horny! Um, so then now I want to talk about which of these games actually simulate dating? Like, this is actually going to just be from my personal experience, but which ones will kind of actually make you feel like you're on a date? Um, so, this game's called Hot Date, which I think is great, suits the theme of this evening. And I saw a Let's Play of this, and I was like, I want to date a pug. So I downloaded it, and it's actually a game where you speed date various different pugs. And... Um, it's really fun because I've been on speed dating. I don't know if anybody has. I've been on cycle speed dating. You don't date the bikes, which really piss me off. But, um, <laughs> so if anybody has done speed dating or not, it's a very kind of London thing um, where you're just thrown in with people for three minutes and you can kind of decide whether you actually talk about who you are or you tell them you're a marine biologist and then just see how it goes. And so in this game, you kind of you have a date and... Um, the dialogue tree, like the way you make uh, questions are really fun. So if you can kind of see on this, it's like, what? And then you're like, there's various different options. And then you suddenly go, is your favorite? And then it, vegetables, letter in the grief, al alphabet, animal, color, prime number. And you're like, ah, uh, and then you just pick something. And then the date kind of, what's really fun about this game is their like animation, their like visual response to your questions and your answers. They can either get like super excited and their tails wagging or they actually just literally slump in the chair and are like, oh! Uh, I'd like to add, they all hated that I said I don't like Kanye. Um, so I wanted to make a point that if anybody's played it, that's a lot like Ultimate Flirt Off, where um, the game kind of has all these little like speech bubbles and you have to just really quickly try and make a sentence to Im like impress somebody and then snog them. Um, I put, it's like desperately seeking and struggling to form a statement to impress someone. That's a date. <laughs> You're just really trying to say something cool and interesting and then you fumble and you say something really odd and then you just kind of hope the other person's down with that or open or... Um, so then there's wrestling with emotions, which is a fun uh, wrestling speed dating game. So you're a wrestler that moves to a new town and there's a fantastic scene where you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, you can be anybody you want. No one knows you. You've got this. And you go on all these speed dates with these other wrestlers. And the fun thing is the game really plays with the fact you can be like, I can't wait to wrestle you. I can't wait to get you between my thighs. And you kind of, again, as hot date, you kind of can watch their visual reactions to your comments. You can choose to kind of flirt with them or you can choose to put them down. And then hats off to this game. You even then actually like speed dating, um, score your date, and then you get matched with the other date that scored you the highest as well. And then the two of you wrestle at the end. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just like a date. <laughs> um, so then I wanted to talk about uh, Kate's uh, awkward dating simulator. I don't know if anybody's played that. I've weirdly just watched Let's Players play it over Skype, which is even more incredibly awkward. Um, but this game kind of, you have to play it with another person if you're not aware of it. And then it comes up with these question prompts that one of you asks the other. And then it has this kind of action at the bottom. And then the timer just goes on for way too long. So you are like, how was your day today? And then you just have to kind of wait for the other person to answer, hope they fill the time. It's all just incredibly awkward and weird. Um, and what I kind of wanted to talk about with all of these games is they really try and achieve um, to capture that kind of awkward feeling of being on a date. Um, and I was going to say, a part of this as well, I think we all love an awkward date story. I mean, we just had a few and we kind of relish in it. It's like, I'm on a date with this pug and he talked about butterflies. And there's something really fun about that. You don't really want to be like, oh, I went on this date and it was really good. So I have, ask me later, I don't think I have time now, but I have a really good story about a guy who only drank Jaeger bombs when I went on a date with him. <laughs> uh, so then I want to talk about dating that happens within a game that isn't a dating game. And for me, I think that's actually kind of like the closest thing to real life, real life dating, because you kind of just didn't think you would meet somebody and you're just doing your own thing. And then, and then they... And then they like ask you out on a date and you're like, oh, my heart skips a beat. And I was like, yeah, yeah, here we are. 
here we are on our date. <laughs> so if you haven't played it, but the date, uh, when you date Papyrus in Undertale, I just think that is so fantastic. Um, I feel like it showcases this kind of uh, gamification of dating games, as we were kind of heard earlier. And the scene in the game has all these like stats and silly things on the screen, and they don't do anything. <laughs> they don't mean anything at all. And then halfway through the date, uh, Papyrus realizes he's not romantically interested in you. And like, that's okay, that's cool, I respect that. And then the two of you become friends. Not a lot of dating sims do this, and I think that's really important. Um, and then I put this in because Mass Effect, there's like dating or something. Um, so then, um, having talked about all these dating games and these dating sims, um, I feel like I had to talk about Love Plus. Uh, if you don't know about Love Plus, for me it's the ultimate dating and relationship sim. Uh, it's a DS game where you have three uh, potential partners that you hang out with at school, I think it's a bit odd, and then you pick the one you like the most, you confess, and then they become your girlfriend, and then they reside in your DS as your girlfriend, and you go on dates with them, and you call them up. Um, so, what's funny about that as well is, I th you know, I think it's a really cute, adorable game, and people really fall in love with their girlfriends, and you can see online, like, they've bought cakes for their birthday, and some people have got married to their DS Plus girlfriends, and I was like, that's stupid, who would do that? But, well, so I'm here to confess that I am in love with a horseman. Uh, so kind of this is the large part of what I wanted to talk about in this talk is uh, Uma, Prince, Sama, horse, prince, my horse boyfriend. Um, it's a game, I don't know if you have seen it, if you haven't, I saw it on Twitter, someone tweeted like, oh my God, this is crazy Japanese horseman dating sim. And I was like, yep, downloaded that immediately in Japanese. I've been playing it in Japanese. Uh, I can only read a tiny bit of Japanese. And the other fun part of the story was we were out on a night out. And I was just like kind of drunk, like, yep. And then we're in a club and I was like, not now, I'm talking to my boyfriend. <laughs> just could not put it down. I have not been able to put it down. It's kind of, I even actually got a, a verbal warning at work. He was like, stop playing that. It's getting to your head. It's not getting to my head. I love him. Um, so what I want to talk about in this game. <laughs> so it's, um, it's a tapper game. And you have these chapters with your horse boyfriend. And each chapter, you're kind of, I, did, I felt like I didn't really have time to explain a lot of the story, but you kind of get thrown in and you and horse, a horse boyfriend are just like, yeah, I'm down, you're into each other. And then each stage of the game, you're kind of making him become a better person. So in this chapter, he's chopping up leeks, he's in the kitchen and he's, at the end of the chapter, I think a bit like the other games, you get this like visual kind of reward. So here he's made me some leeks, and I don't know how he's holding the chopsticks, but it's cool, it's fine. <laughs> um, so here um, he got a job, and I was helping him out with the job, and at the end he's rewarded himself with a fag and some coffee. <laughs> and other chapters, I went to his gig, we went to the beach. Um, the other really interesting thing about this game is a rival turns up. I shouldn't admit I am attracted to the rival, but um, so my basic Japanese um, horse boyfriend like asks you, quite, like you get three questions every half an hour. And because I've been playing it in Japanese, I have to kind of just try and guess the answer. But it, just enough I could read, he was like, Yuri the viral, he's like, is, is Yuri, do you think Yuri's cool? And I was like, no, no way, no way, man. And his excitement goes up, and so you have like good, bad, or excellent. And when you answer an excellent, his little ears like shake, and he gets like extra bonuses. And it's like this most amazing thing where I was like, I know I love you more. And he's like, yes. And you're able to get more done in the game. And it's a bit like this football manager thing. Like, I'm helping him get better because I love him and he loves me. Um, and the point I wanted to make really was. Also, actually, another funny thing is you get little like text message notifications when you can play it again. So it's kind of like 
like a boyfriend, like, hey, hey, buddy, how are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, I'm cool, how are you? Um, I, because it's phone-based, it really feels like this kind of relationship where he's just there on the phone and I can chat to him and hang out with him. Um, it allows you to take pictures of stuff. So I've been showing people like what me and horse boyfriend have been up to. Not a lot of people seem to like it, but we're having a lot of fun. We're having a great time. Um, so what's interesting when you're talking about dating sims is this isn't really a dating sim. It's a relationship sim. And in this game, you're maintaining a relationship that goes both ways. Because I feel like I'm making him a better person. We're going on a journey together. And I think that's... I didn't really feel like I had time to talk about what a relationship is, but I feel like that's a large part of it. And this game goes way beyond the date. So a lot of dating sims, you're like going on a date, and then so you play another dating sim and you go on a date. And a lot of dating sims, you don't go on another date. And in this game, just going, then some of them aren't even really dates. We're just kind of living together, experiencing together, doing stuff together. So. You know, I mentioned something like Love Plus, but this is a game that goes way beyond the date. And downloaded it, and I thought it was going to be really silly. And this game really, this game really moved me. It just, yeah. Um, so then, finally, I wanted to talk about Kindness Coins, which is a game you need to play if you are interested in dating sims and what dating sims are. It's a five minute visual novel, so you have no excuse. Um, it was a game jam game made by Arden. Uh, they are working on uh, Date or Die at the moment, which looks amazing. So this game, I'm gonna do a brief summary for you, is a subversion of this genre, of the dating sim genre. In it, uh, you are the character, the protagonist is trying to date and you're not interested. So dating sim mechanics, a lot of them offer romance as a reward. The name, the title, Kindness Coins, refers to the fact that we're not machines that you can put kindness coins into and sex will come out. So this is a game that rejects that idea. Um, and then, so I then had a thought, um, why, why are these games so funny? Um, you know, they're really, they have really silly characters and creatures. But I think the fact that we find them funny says less about the game and more about ourselves. If I went back and did that game concept list again, if I went back and said, right, you could shoot all of these rather than date them, I don't think you would find it funny. And I think, I've been trying to think about this, been, it's because dating is intimate. And on dates, we have to kind of open ourselves up and in turn, we become vulnerable. So the essence of dating is doing something scary. You kind of put yourself out there, um, you know, and you don't really have an idea of the response you're going to get back. So why would you justify making yourselves vulnerable for a horse? No matter how subjectively handsome he is, you know, you think, ah, uh, you know, what will my parents think? And then you think, maybe he won't get on with my friends. Dating games are really silly, but I think they're meaningful as well. It's because they play with our reservations about who we want to be with, who we think we can be with, and even how we feel about ourselves. So I don't care what you think. I've learned a lot, and I love my horse. Baby.